and welcome to this next Powerful Kids video. Now in the last video we did, we went on an exploration into space and it was pretty energetic, wasn't it Grace? Uh -huh. It certainly was. So we thought this time we'd do something which was a little bit gentler and a lovely stretch. But today's theme is going to be... Egyptians! It's all about the Egyptians. Now the Egyptians used to symbolise something. What was it that you'd see on the hieroglyphics on the, written on the tombs? You'd see a lot of animals. A lot of animals and that's because the Egyptians used animals as symbols to represent all sorts of things, characteristics that humans didn't have and that, the, and that Egyptians used to admire. So for example like a beetle, they recognised and saw how a beetle would scurry and bury itself underground and they saw that as a sign of survival and thought it was an amazing thing so they would characterise the beetles in that way and it would be that symbol of survival. So we're going to go through some animals right now and birds as well as animals and we're going to symbolise them and talk about them as we go through and stretch our bodies out and do a bit of balancing as well. Okay, so let's start off with our first one which is going to be what's it going to be Grace? Falcon. A falcon, yes. Yeah, so we're going to soar through the sky like a falcon. So if you take your left leg off the floor and balance on your right and then soar through the sky. Now the falcons were seen as protective animals, protective birds as they would soar over the heads of the pharaohs, over the heads of the people and protect the whole of the land below them as they would soar through the sky balancing. Can you balance guys? Oh well done Grace, that's really good. Soaring through the sky. Now our next animal represented something. If I do my hands like that, can you think what it might be? Let's stick our right leg out, left leg out, and the next animal is a ball. Now, bend your left knee, straighten your right leg, and push your hips forward, because this is where our strength comes from. Now, balls were seen as incredibly powerful, strong animals, and that's often why they were revered as these amazing, powerful beasts. So you can be a powerful beast. Can you make a noise like a bull? I think we can, can, can you Grace? It's like a Oh, that's actually, Grace is making a better sound than me for a bull. Can you make a sound like a bull? Now push your hips forward and really feel strong in this position. Well done, Grace. Okay, now our next animal is very different. What could it be? Where's the Frogs! Can you be a frog? Can you jump like a frog? Let's jump like a frog. Woo! And jump again. Should we do one more jump? Up you go. Oh! Now, what do frogs represent? Do you know, Grace? Well, the river Nile is a massive in Egypt. It is. Invisibility. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Now there's another animal which was very much seen as a pet, and, and often Egyptians had lots and lots of pets. So this one, we have this as a pet as well. What is it, Grace? It's a cat. A cat. Now, can you be a really elegant cat? And if you see pictures of Egyptian cats, they have very long limbs. So I want you to put your paws down like that, and then I want you to draw your shoulders down and lengthen your neck and be a cat, a very elegant cat. So they were seen as wonderful, graceful animals in ancient Egypt. Now we can also do a cat stretch. Can you stretch like a cat? I'm going to turn around sideways and we're going to tuck our heads in and stretch up like a cat. So tuck your tail underneath, tuck your head in and get a lovely stretch into your back. Now there's another pet animal that stretches a lot. Do you know what it is, Grace? A dog. Can we stretch like a dog? Now this is a yoga move. We're going to curl our toes underneath and then lift up and pull our weight back. Now dogs were a symbol as well in ancient Egypt and often seen as a jackal which is a, oh you just often see the head of the jackals on things like the mummies and the coffins and if you pull your weight back and the dogs were also animals that would be um, up in the mountains where they would bury the tombs so they were seen as an animal that re represented the just dead. So there we go, there's our down dog pulling all the way back. Now the next animal we're gonna be is a snake. Come forward, but we're gonna be a particular snake. It's a cobra. Now where would we see the cobra? Do you know where you'd see the cobra? We would see them on the crown. 
of the pharaoh. That's right. So you'd often see that beautiful cobra shape on the top of the crown. Beautiful snake type shape on the top of the crown. That's it. Fantastic. Now, our next animal is going to be a lion. Can you pull back into a lion? Now, if you curl your toes underneath and then if you lift your knees off the floor and go, Rah! Rah! Can you do Rah! Now, lions were seen as animals that were associated with the sun, the setting and the rising of the sun, and often seen, obviously, as a powerful, strong animal, often one that pharaohs would use as a symbol. Now, the next animal we're going to be is... Turtles! Turtles! Now, can you be a turtle? So you're going to come down to the floor, and then you're going to lift your head up and stick your tongue out. Now, turtles were seen as animals of darkness and quite evil, which is surprising, really, isn't it? But turtles are so <laughs> Well, maybe then weren't in ancient Egypt. So, after being a turtle, I think we should be one more animal. Do you know what we should be? I think we should go back to the beetle. Should we be a burrowing beetle into the floor? But also, should we turn over and be a beetle on our backs? Let's roll over. Come on, guys, roll over and flay your legs in the air, beetle on your back and then come back into being an upright beetle and into your turtle position again. And then let's curl our toes underneath and should we do this, come back up and let's do this one more time on the other side. So we're gonna roll up and now you're gonna balance onto your left leg. So balance onto your left leg and soar through the sky like a falcon. That's it, well done. Soaring through the sky, so remember those falcons. That's it, protecting all the people and the pharaohs. And then we're gonna go into our ball. So you're gonna take your left leg out long, get that ball horn, take your right foot to the side, and then power forward. Pushing your hips forward, and lots of lovely strength in your legs, and push your hips forward, the powerful, strong balls. Now we're gonna be our frogs. Can you be your frog? Drop down into your frog position. And should we jump like a frog? Are you ready? Jump up. And again, jump up, grab it, one more time, jump up. And then from our frogs, let's be that elegant, elegant cat. That's it, lift up through, long neck. And a cat stretch, let's go into our cat stretch. So tuck your head in, tuck your tail in, up like a cat, stretching your back. And then into our down dog. So curl your toes underneath and lift up and pull back, sending your tailbone up, working the shoulders down, and just getting that lovely length in your legs. Stick your bottom up in the air. That's it. And then from our down dogs, let's go into our cobra. So come forwards and lift up. Bring your back up into that lovely long cobra shape. And then from our cobras, we're going to come into our lions. Curl your toes underneath, lift your nose up knees off the floor and go rah, rah. <laughs> now we're going to be the turtle so tuck him into your turtle and then let's lift our heads up and go and then we're gonna scurry like scurry like a beetle underneath the earth and then we're gonna turn over and then back again and then into your turtle shape again. Oh, well done, guys. I hope you enjoyed doing your animal uh, stretches with us, all based on Egyptian symbols.